is Theodore Gramble. Experiment 1188. This is his sad origin story. Aged only seven, Theodore, who was an orphan, found himself among the many forgotten children residing at home, sweet home. A subdivision of play care where the orphans slept and dark experiments were created. The orphans had no recollection of how they ended up here, but they also had nowhere else to go. It was a place where loneliness often overshadowed any sense of belonging and where dreams were scarce commodities. And Theodore was no different. He was lonely. And he had no friends. He always wanted to make friends. But the facility had other plans for the children. And especially to Theodore. In the midst of his loneliness, Theodore found solace in an unlikely companion. An imaginary friend who lived beneath his bed. But this new imaginary friend was not any ordinary friend. It was the prototype. Little did he know, this friend was not a mere figment of his imagination, but the prototype itself who was seeking refuge from the prying eyes of the facility. They became the best of friends, and Theodore, finally started to experience happiness for the first time. However, one day everything was about to change. The prototype didn't really have any emotions towards Theodore. He had his own plans. And swayed by the prototype's persuasions, Theodore found himself entangled in a scheme to liberate the orphans from their confinements. Ignorant of the dangers that lay ahead, Theodore attempted to operate the grab back, a device designed for such clandestine endeavors. However, his lack of understanding led to a tragic accident, leaving him electrocuted and exposed. The incident caught the attention of Thomas Clark, an observant employee who witnessed Theodore's imaginary friend lurking nearby. Suspicion grew, and anger within the facility from Theodore's actions grew even bigger. And that is when they took the decision to start the experiment they planned for Theodore, to start his involvement in the ominous bigger body initiative. Theodore was chosen as the orphan who would inherit Catnap's body and become experiment number 1188. His role as Catnap was to guard home sweet home and prevent any orphans from escaping. With the insertion of the enigmatic red gas, Theodore underwent a transformation, his consciousness melding with that of Catnaps, forever altering his existence. Despite the transformation, traces of Theodore's past lingered within Catnaps' consciousness, particularly his unwavering devotion to the prototype. In his eyes, the prototype was not just a friend, but a beacon of salvation, revered with an almost religious fervor. Though the prototype remained indifferent, Catnap's devotion knew no bounds, weaving a tale of obsession and misplaced faith within the walls of home sweet home. Hold on to your whiskers, folks, because Catnap is back and ready to pounce into action. Catnap was not always like this. Once upon a time, in a small town, 
there lived a unique purple-furred cat named Catnap. His fur was a vibrant shade of purple, and he had striking black eyes, triangular ears, a long tail, and paws that mirrored the darker hue found inside his ears. Despite his whimsical appearance, Catnap lived a rather unfortunate life. Working in a shoddy daycare for children, the daycare was run by an evil manager who always sought ways to make the children fall asleep. Catnap had a unique ability. He could produce a special gas that induced deep sleep. The manager, with devious plans in mind, Do as I say, or else enlisted Catnap's help to ensure the children napped whenever he wished. One fateful day, a hyperactive little girl, whose parents had warned the daycare about her aversion to sleep, joined the group. The manager instructed Catnap to befriend her and earn her trust so that he could use his sleep-inducing gas on her when the time came. As days turned into weeks, Catnap and the little girl spent time playing together. They developed a genuine friendship, and Catnap found himself caring for her deeply. The thought of using his gas to make her sleep troubled him. Go now. And he began stalling whenever the manager pressured him to carry out the evil plan. The manager grew impatient with Catnap's hesitation and issued a chilling threat he would harm Catnap if he didn't comply. Fearful for his safety, Catnap reluctantly agreed, but couldn't bring himself to use the gas on his newfound friend. One day, pushed to the edge by the manager's threats, Catnap felt an uncontrollable transformation overtaking him. He grew larger and more menacing, his purple fur bristling with energy. The gas, meant to put the little girl to sleep, burst forth uncontrollably, affecting everyone in its path, including Catnap himself. As the gas enveloped the daycare, the little girl succumbed to its effects. Catnap, horrified by the unintended consequences of his actions, realized the gravity of his mistake. He became an evil monster. Catnap was not always evil. This is his dark origin story. Once upon a time, in a city not too far away, there lived a cat named Catnap. With his soft purple fur and big black eyes, he was a sight to behold. But Catnap wasn't always the scary creature that people feared. Long ago, Catnap was just a regular cat who lived in a cozy home with a loving family. His days were simple and happy, filled with warmth and love. He would wake up to the sun shining, stretch lazily, and enjoy a hearty breakfast. Then, he would spend his days playing and exploring, sometimes venturing outside to feel the grass beneath his paws. But one day, everything changed. A strange experiment went wrong, and Catnap was transformed into a monstrous form. His once cute appearance turned into something terrifying, and he was filled with anger and confusion. He didn't understand what had happened to him and he lashed out at everything around him. Catnap, consumed by anger and confusion over his transformation, chose to unleash his frustrations on schools and nurseries deliberately. Unable to comprehend or control his monstrous abilities, he directed his wrath towards places of innocence and learning wanting to shatter the peace and disrupt the tranquility of those who dwelled within. 
His actions were fueled by a desire to ensure that nobody could escape the torment and fear that now plagued his existence, ensuring that no child could find solace in sleep, haunted instead by the nightmares of his monstrous form. Catnaps, attacks on schools, and nurseries were particularly devastating. With his monstrous form and powerful gas, he would lurk near these places, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. When the children were outside playing or heading home, Catnap would unleash his gas, engulfing them in a toxic cloud. The gas would cause the children to fall into a deep sleep, unable to wake up. The people of the city were terrified of Catnap. They lived in fear of his attacks and the children suffered from nightmares of his monstrous form. The intelligence agencies were watching Catnap closely. They used cameras and spies to track him, studying his gas and trying to figure out how to stop him. But Catnap was smart and always managed to escape. The agencies had a hard time keeping up with him as he roamed the city causing chaos wherever he went. But one official had a different idea. They wanted to capture Catnap and use him as a weapon. So, the agencies began to pursue Catnap, chasing him from place to place. But they weren't the only ones after him. Another country's intelligence service was also hunting Catnap. The intelligence agency swiftly alerted the president upon discovering that a rival intelligence agency was also in pursuit of Katna. Recognizing the urgency of the situation and the potential threat posed by the monstrous creature, they urgently requested additional resources to bolster their efforts in capturing Katna before the enemy agency could do so. The president, understanding the gravity of the situation and the need for decisive action, promptly agreed to allocate more resources to the agency's mission. With the president's support secured, the agency redoubled their efforts, determined to apprehend Catnap and prevent him from falling into the hands of their adversaries. The two agencies fought fiercely over Catnap their pursuit escalating into a dangerous game of cat and mouse. They chased him through the city streets, dodging obstacles and exchanging gunfire. Buildings shook with the force of their explosions, and the air was filled with the sound of shouting and chaos. Catnap, with his agility and cunning, managed to outmaneuver them time and again leaping from rooftops and darting down alleyways. The agencies, determined to capture Catnap, brought in the reinforcements, leading to a full-scale battle in the heart of the city. Despite their best efforts, neither agency could gain the upper hand, and Catnap continued to elude them, leaving destruction in his wake. Catnap, with his newfound monstrous abilities, proved to be a slippery adversary, eluding the efforts of both intelligence agencies. Utilizing his agility and cunning, he slipped through the cracks of their surveillance networks, leaving behind only chaos and destruction. Despite the agency's best efforts to corner him, Catnap seemed to always be one step ahead, disappearing into the shadows of the cityscape before they could close in on him. With each passing day, Catnap continued his rampage, terrorizing the city with his attacks on schools and nurseries, leaving a trail of fear and devastation in his path. As the agencies scrambled to devise new strategies to apprehend him, 
Catnap remained a formidable and elusive foe, his reign of havoc showing no signs of abating. In a desperate bid to prevent their rival agency from capturing Catnap, the country's intelligence service made a bold and risky decision. They would take matters into their own hands and eliminate Catnap themselves. Determined that it would be them or no one, they launched a coordinated attack on Catnap, opening fire with all the firepower at their disposal. However, their plans quickly went awry when Catnap, in a fit of rage and desperation, underwent another transformation. Caught off guard by this unexpected turn of events, the agency's attempts to neutralize Catnap only served to escalate the situation, plunging the city into further chaos and devastation. In the end, Catnap transformed into an even larger monster and flew into the sky, spraying his gas all over the earth. The world was plunged into darkness and despair as Catnap's reign of terror continued unchecked. His voice quivered with a mixture of fear and devotion, sealing his fate and that of his unsuspecting victim. And so, Catnap, once a harmless cat, became the destroyer of worlds. Catnap wanted to dream, but did not expect to become the Nightmare. Once upon a time, in one of the city's most beloved daycares, there lived a little purple-furred cat named Catnap. He was a friendly feline with big black eyes, triangle-shaped ears, and a long tail that swayed as he moved about. His job at the play care was to help the little children sleep during their nap time using his special gas. Catnap loved his job dearly. He found joy in seeing the children drift off to dreamland peacefully. For years, Catnap had been the go-to assistant for the teachers at the play care. His gas worked like magic, lulling even the most restless of children into a deep slumber. Every day was an adventure for Catnap as he went about his duties, bringing comfort and rest to the little ones. But then, one day, everything changed. A new teacher named Miss Delight joined the staff. With her calm presence and soothing voice, the children seemed less dependent on Catnap's gas to fall asleep. At first, Catnap didn't mind. He was happy to see the children feeling at ease with Miss Delight around. But as days turned into weeks, Catnap started to feel left out. Life at the play care became monotonous for Catnap. The once fulfilling job now felt mundane, and Catnap himself started to lose sleep. It was ironic, really, considering his power was putting others to sleep. Night after night, Catnap tossed and turned, unable to find the rest he so desperately needed. As the day wore on and Catnap struggled to stay awake, his exhaustion began to take its toll. His once reliable gas began to falter, leaving the children restless and unable to sleep. In his drowsy state, Catnap accidentally knocked over a stack of toys, startling the little ones and causing a commotion. His boss, noticing the chaos, approached Catnap with a stern expression. Catnap, she said firmly, you're not yourself today. I can't have you putting the children at risk because you're too tired to do your job properly. With a heavy heart, she reprimanded him and sent him home for the day, reminding him of the importance of being alert and responsible in his role at the play care. Catnap felt a pang of guilt as he trudged out of the building, realizing that his own struggles with sleep had caused him to let down those who depended on him the most. One day, Mr. Light noticed Catnap's change in behavior and approached him with concern. 
she asked him what was wrong, and Catnap poured out his heart. He explained how he was feeling left out, and how life was losing its meaning for him. Miss Delight listened attentively, and then suggested something unexpected. Maybe you should try using your own gas on yourself, she said gently. Perhaps it could help you sleep. At first, Catnap was hesitant. The thought of using his own gas on himself seemed strange. But as the days passed and his insomnia worsened, he grew desperate. Finally, he decided to give it a try. Taking a deep breath, Catnap released his gas and slowly breathed it in. Almost instantly, he felt himself growing drowsy. With a sigh of relief, he closed his eyes and drifted off into slumber. But then, something unexpected happened. Catnap found himself in a fantastical dream world, where every wish seemed to come true. He marveled at the strange creatures and wondrous landscapes that surrounded him. Everywhere he turned, laughter filled the air, and friendly creatures danced to a joyful melody. Catnap felt a sense of freedom, unlike anything he had ever experienced before, as if the boundaries of reality had melted away leaving only endless possibilities in their wake. Each moment was a testament to the boundless imagination of his dreams, where even the simplest desires were granted with a touch of whimsy and wonder. As Catnap explored his dream, he encountered a version of himself, but something was off. This dream version warned Catnap that the longer he stayed in the dream, the harder it would be to wake up. Catnap brushed off the warning and continued to enjoy his dream adventure. However, his joy turned to fear when he stumbled upon a dark, ominous lake. Peering into the murky waters, he saw a reflection that chilled him to the bone. His reflection was not his own. Instead, it was a nightmarish version of himself a skeletal, monstrous creature that bore little resemblance to the friendly cat he knew. As Catnap's heart pounded with fear, the monster from his reflection emerged from the lake, its eyes glowing with malice as it lunged towards him. He turned and sprinted away from the skeletal monster, his paws pounding against the ground in a desperate attempt to escape. But no matter how fast he ran, the monster seemed to draw nearer with each passing moment, its ghastly form looming ever closer. It was as if the very ground beneath his feet were conspiring against him, shifting and twisting to impede his progress. With each step, Catnap's panic grew, his breath coming in ragged gasps as he realized that no matter how far he ran, he could never outrun the terror that pursued him relentlessly. A sinister laugh echoed in Catnap's mind. He recognized the laugh. Panicking, Catnap tried to wake himself up, but it was no use. It was Miss Delight's evil laugh. She was behind all of this. As the monster's skeletal claws closed around Catnap's trembling form, a monstrous transformation began. As Catnap's essence was slowly absorbed into the creature, until they became one. Thoughts of revenge flooded Catnap's mind as he swore to haunt Miss Delight's dreams for the torment he endured. And so, Catnap became a nightmare of revenge. Dog Day was a happy and friendly dog who lived in the playtime factory, a place where toys were made and tested. Mm -hmm. 
He was part of the Smiling Critters, a group of toys that starred in a popular cartoon show. Dog Day loved his job and his friends and always had a smile on his face. However, there was one toy that Dog Day did not like. Catnap, a purple cat with a zipper on his chest and a moon pendant. Catnap was the villain of the show who always tried to ruin the fun of the smiling critters. He was sneaky and cunning and had a device inside his zipper that could control other toys' minds. Dog Day and Catnap had a long history of rivalry ever since they were created. They often fought and argued and never got along. Dog Day suspected that Catnap had a secret plan to take over the factory and the show. He decided to keep an eye on him and stop him if he ever tried anything. One day, Dog Day noticed that Catnap was acting strangely. He was not in his usual spot in the storage room where he slept during the day. He was also not in the studio where he filmed the show. He was nowhere to be found. Dog Day wondered where he was and what he was up to. He decided to follow him and see what he was doing. He searched the whole factory, but he could not find him. He was about to give up when he heard a faint noise coming from the basement. He followed the sound and found a hidden door behind a pile of boxes. He opened the door and entered a dark and dusty room. There, he saw Catnap sitting on a chair in front of a large screen. On the screen, he saw images of the factory, the show, and the other toys. He also saw numbers and symbols that looked like codes and commands. Dog Day realized that Catnap was hacking into the factory system and trying to take control of everything. He was shocked and angry and decided to stop him. He barked loudly and ran towards him. Catnap heard him and turned around. He saw Dog Day and smirked. Well, 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 it isn't my old friend Dog Day. What a surprise to see you here. I was just about to finish my masterpiece. You see, I have been working on this for a long time. I have found a way to use my device to hack into the factory system and override the security protocols. I can now control every toy, every machine, every camera, and every screen in this place. I can make them do whatever I want. I can make them obey me. I can make them love me. I can make them hate you. I can make them destroy you. I can make them mine. And you know what? I can also control you. You are just a toy, like the rest of them. You have a chip inside your head that I can access and manipulate. You have no free will. No choice, no personality. You are nothing but a puppet, and I am the puppeteer. And now, I will show you what I can do. Watch this. Catnap pressed a button on his remote, and the screen changed. It showed a live feed of the studio, where the smiling critters were filming the show. They looked happy and cheerful, as usual. Then, something happened. They stopped moving, and their eyes turned red. They looked at the camera, and spoke in a monotone voice. Hello, kids. We are the Smiling Critters, and we have a special message for you. We want to tell you that we 
yeah. love. <laughs> he is our leader, our master, our friend. He is the best toy in the world, and we want to be like him. He is smart, strong, brave, and handsome. The screen went black, and the message ended. Dog Day was horrified and speechless. He could not believe what he had just seen. He looked at Catnap, who was laughing at him. Dog Day felt a sharp pain in his head and a voice in his ear. It was Catnap who was using his device to control his mind. He felt his will being crushed and his thoughts being erased. He felt his emotions being twisted and his memories being replaced. He felt his identity being lost. Dog Day felt a strange urge to hurt Boggybot, the friendly robot and a friend to Dog Day. He felt his body being forced to run towards the studio. He ran up and barked at him. Catnap was laughing maniacally, as he was the one who was controlling Dog Day's actions. Dog Day tried to resist, but it was as if his body was not his to control. He inched closer to Bogglebot and started strangling him. Dog Day screamed and fought against his body, not wanting to hurt his friend. Catnap was laughing evilly at what he saw. The rage and tension inside Dog Day was rising until a strange transformation began to happen. Dog Day was becoming a monster, seeking revenge. He became an evil monster. Catnap changed the life of Dog Day forever. This is Their Dark Origin Story. Once upon a time, in a depressing city, there lived two very different animals. One was a cute orange dog named Dog Day, who was adored by everyone. The other was a purple cat named Catnap who lived a lonely and harsh life on the streets. Dog Day was born special, with a charm that melted hearts wherever he went. He had a loving family who showered him with affection and made sure he had everything he needed. Dog Day was living the dream life of every pet. On the other hand, Catnap the street cat had a completely different story. Born into abandonment, he wandered the streets alone, enduring the cruelty of this world. Dog Day, the adorable orange dog, was born into a warm and loving home. From the moment he opened his eyes, he was surrounded by affection and care. His family doted on him, showering him with love, treats, and endless playtime. They celebrated his birthdays, with joyous festivities, creating cherished memories that would last a lifetime. Dog Day's upbringing was filled with laughter, companionship, and an abundance of love, shaping him into the beloved pet he would become. In stark contrast, Catnap's childhood was a stark contrast to Dog Day's idyllic upbringing. Born into the harsh reality of the streets, Catnap knew only loneliness and struggled from the moment he entered the world. Without a loving family to call his own, he wandered the alleys and back streets alone, scavenging for scraps to survive. His days were filled with hunger, fear, and the constant threat of cruelty from those who saw him as nothing more than a nuisance. Catnap longed for the warmth and security that Dog Day enjoyed, but it seemed an unattainable dream in his harsh and unforgiving world.
Every attempt Catnap made to find food was met with hostility, leaving him bitter and resentful. He longed for the love and care that Dog Day received so effortlessly. As Dog Day frolicked in the sunshine, surrounded by the love of his family and friends, Catnap watched from the shadows with envy and resentment. He yearned for the affection and attention that Dog Day effortlessly received, feeling the sting of rejection with each passing day. Despite their vastly different beginnings, both Dog Day and Catnap were destined for a collision course that would forever alter the course of their lives. And so, consumed by jealousy and anger, Catnap devised a wicked plan to turn the tables in his favor. He watched Dog Day with envy, plotting to steal his happiness and take his place in the family's affection. One day, when Dog Day was outside playing, Catnap seized his opportunity. With a swift motion, he snatched Dog Day and disappeared into the shadows of the sewers below. In the darkness of the sewers, Catnap subjected Dog Day to torment, demanding that he reveal the secret to his beloved status. Dog Day was unable to withstand the pain. Catnap began to conduct scientific experiments, drawing inspiration from tales of mad scientists and their unholy creations, which he read in old discarded books and newspapers. Catnap set out to devise a method to extract and absorb Dog Day's loving nature. Using whatever makeshift equipment he could cobble together from discarded junk and debris, Catnap toiled tirelessly, combining elements of alchemy and pseudoscience in a desperate bid to achieve his twisted goal. He concocted potions and elixirs, mixing together strange and exotic ingredients in a macabre fusion of science and sorcery. Finally, after countless sleepless nights and tireless experimentation, Catnap believed he had found the solution he had been searching for, hoping that it would grant him the love and adoration he so desperately desired. Catnap began to charm his way into the family's affection. He mimicked Dog Day's behaviors, gradually winning over their hearts and earning their love and care. The family loved him, and he became their new pet. He started to experience the life that Dog Day lived. They started feeding Catnap, celebrating his birthdays, taking care of all his needs. He was finally living the life he dreamed of, the life he always desired. As Catnap was enjoying the warmth of his newfound family, he callously forgot about Dog Day. All this time, he was left to suffer, alone, in the depths of the sewers. What Catnap did not know, that in the darkness, a transformation was about to happen. Consumed by a seething hatred, born of betrayal and abandonment, a sinister transformation began to take hold. The noxious fumes and toxic chemicals that permeated the air mingled with the overwhelming bitterness festering within him, triggering a volatile chemical reaction that would forever alter his essence, twisting his once adorable features into something altogether more terrifying. His fur, once vibrant and soft, began to bristle and darken. As Dog Day's body contorted and shifted, his once friendly demeanor gave way to something altogether more menacing. His eyes, once bright with innocence and joy, now glowed with an otherworldly fury, reflecting the depths of his newfound hatred 
and rage. His once playful bark became a guttural growl, reverberating through the darkness like a harbinger of doom. His claws, once trimmed and harmless, grew long and razor sharp, gleaming with a malevolent sheen in the dim light. Each swipe left deep gouges in the ground, a testament to their newfound lethality. His teeth, once perfect for nibbling treats, became jagged and menacing, capable of tearing through flesh with ease. With every snarl, his terrifying fangs were revealed, dripping with venomous saliva that seemed to pulse with a sinister energy. Dog Day's heart turned to stone, fueled by a burning desire for vengeance. He transformed into a monstrous creature of hatred. He emerged from the shadows, ready to confront Catnap and reclaim what was rightfully his. But that, my friends, is a story 